Hey everybody. Today we're using a nested data frame to get multiple linear models for different subsets of a data set all at once. This is one of my favorite applications of the map function in the per package. I'm going to start by loading up the tidy models family of packages. This includes some key elements of tidyverse that I'm going to be using, including ggplot2, dplyr, tidier, and per, of course. Um, I'm also going to be using the model data package. This includes the Palmer Penguins data set. That's the main thing I'm going to be working with in this vid. I'm also going to be using some functions from Broom. Broom gives us some tools for tidying linear model objects. Let's take a glimpse at the Penguins data set. It's an old friend. I use it in a lot of vids. Here we have 344 observations of three different species of penguins, a daily, chin strap, and Gen 2. We have several different biological measurements. Right now, I'm going to be interested in modeling bill length, mm, as a function of bill depth, mm, for each of the different species of penguins. Now, here I only have three species, but it's easy to imagine a situation where I might have 10, 1,000 even. So splitting this thing up and applying a model to each piece is not practical in most situations. Instead, what I'm going to do is to nest this data set. So I'm going to create um, a new data frame called penguins nested. And I'm going to get it by piping the penguins data set into a group by. And I'm going to group by species. So usually we see group by along with summarize. And we imagine something like that would give us out a data frame with three rows one for each of the levels of the species variable, a daily chin strap in Gen 2. And we're going to get a similar thing out of the nest command in the tidier package. Um, let's just take a quick look at it. I think it's easier to understand when we're seeing it. One row per species, as we'd expect. Um, what R has done with the nest command is to collapse the rest of the data frame down into one column. This is what we call a list column. It's a column that is a list. And um, the first element of that list is going to be the entire penguins data set for the a daily penguins. Let's take a look at that. Let's, uh, let's view penguins nested. And let's just look at the first item of that list. I'll use the double bracket to, um, to take the first element of the list and strip away the, a layer of it to just give us a data frame back. And uh, clearly, I've done something wrong here. Oh, because it's penguins nested dollar data that I'm looking for. I want the first item in the data column. There we go. So you can see it looks a lot like the original penguins data set. Here, though, there's only six columns. We're missing the species column. The species column is contained in the nesting data frame. We've still got all of the other columns, however. We now have 152 rows. That's going to be the number of um, Torgans and Penguins in the original data set. Um, the number of a daily Penguins in the original data set. I'm sorry, the Torgensen is the island. OK, great. So the wonderful thing about this is that now we can use the map function to apply functions, um, any function that we might like, to these different data frames all at once. The function I'm going to want to apply is a linear model, but I'm going to want a specific sort of linear model. I'm going to want a linear model where the response variable is bill length, mm, and the explanatory variable is bill depth, mm. So um, in order to reflect that common structure that my data frames all have, I'm going to build a specialized function. Let's call it penguins lm. And it's going to be a function of the data of a data frame. I'm always going to pass it a data frame. I'm having in mind that I'm going to be passing it <laughs> each of these data frames here. And um, in each case, I want to do a linear model where bill length mm is the response variable, and bill depth mm is the explanatory variable. The data set that I'm going to use in that linear model is exactly the data set passed in by this function. OK. Great. So um, let's now get a new column in the penguins nested data set that's going to have um, a linear model for each of these three sets in it. So that's going to be a mutate. I'm going to take penguins nested, which I do have to spell correctly. And I think I'll just overwrite it. 
I'm going to take penguins nested, I'm going to pipe it into a mutate to add this new column. The new column is going to be called model. I want one model for each of these rows. And um, the way I'm going to get that is with a map function. So map is going to iterate over all of the things here and apply a certain function. So I want to map over the data column. And the function I want to apply is, of course, the thing that I just made, penguins lm. And uh, let's just take another view on penguins nested. All right. So you can see that um, I have a in each of the three elements in the list column that I've called model, I have some sort of complicated list. Fundamentally, that's just my linear model object. Um, let's see one of those. Let's use a summary command on uh, penguins nested dollar model. And let's just do the first one. This will be the one for the uh, daily penguins. And there you can see your typical output of your summary for a linear model object. So we've got three of those. Um, we can do all sorts of fun stuff with this. The thing that I want to do is to use some functions in the broom package to tidy up this output. And I want to tidy up this output and um, add some more list columns here for the tidied output. So um, I think I'm just going to go back to the same old uh, mutate command. And um, I want to get model tidy equals, again, applying a map function. But this time, I want to apply the map function to the model objects. And for each of those model objects, I want to apply the um, tidy command in the broom package. Let's take another view. OK. So um, the model tidy command, let's just take a, a quick look at this. Model tidy. And I don't want the summary now. I want the view. There we go. All right. So you can see what model tidy did is it gave me um, one row for the intercept, one row for the build depth. It gave me the estimate of that coefficient, along with some information about the spread, the um, how variable that statistic would be if we were to repeat the um, random sampling over and over again. We've got standard error, t value, p value, and so on. Um, let's also get a model glance. That's another one of my favorite functions in the um, in the broom package. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to map over my model but I'm going to use the glance function now. And that will just add another column to the penguins nested data set. And uh, OK, great. That T was just, what is, the, what is the T doing here? Hmm. Some sort of typo in there that I'm not understanding, but don't need to worry about too much. Let's take a look at. Uh, what model glance is giving us in each case. So here we get one row with just some overall summary information about the performance of the model, the adjusted R squared, and so on. Great. OK, so if we look at the penguins nested data set, it's starting to get complicated. We've got a lot of information here. For each of the three different species, we have one column that holds the data, one column that holds the linear model, um, one column that holds a tidied version of the model with the coefficients and so on. And then one column that holds overall performance information about the model. Um, several of these columns include data frames. You see the data column as well as the model tidy and the model glance. Um, I got some ad hoc access to those things with um, this sort of subsetting operation. But of course, that's not very efficient. Let's um, let's take a look at what we get when we unnest this data frame. So how about let's get a new thing called penguins. I don't know. Let's just call it penguins M. I don't want to spend too much time thinking of really descriptive names for all of these. And I'm going to take penguins nested, and I'm just going to unnest it according to I don't know. Let's use the model tidy column. 
Let's see what we get there. Penguins. Okay, so um, what has happened now is for each group, a daily, Gen 2, and chin strap, um, R has gone in and seen that the um, tidy, um, the model tidy column is data frames with two rows. And so here we got two rows out for each element of our group. And instead of just having that list column now, you can see that we've expanded to include all of the columns in each of the data sets that we had, each of which has a common structure. Intercept and build depth were the two rows in each of those data frames. Uh, just to illustrate how powerful this can be, let's um, do penguins T and let's unnest along, or how about penguins G and let's unnest along model glance. And uh, we'll take a view on penguins G. Great. So um, the glance command only gave us one row back. And so when we unnest along um, that column, we still get the three original columns from our penguins nested data frame back. But now we have a lot more columns. Um, R squared, adjusted R, sigma, and so on. Notice that the other nested columns, the other list columns, model tidy and data, have been left as full data frames. Um, so they're, they're carried along with the unnest command. They just um, are, are summarized in this neat way. They're packaged up in this neat way so that they don't clutter up everything that we're looking at. Okay. The last thing that I want to do is to use this Penguins M data set, um, which of course for each of the three different penguins gives us intercept and slope for the regression line in that group. And I'd like to use that to get a ggplot with the original data and these regression lines plotted over. And if this goes correctly, I should get exactly the same thing that I would normally get just in a ggplot. Um, for instance, colored by the species variable with a geom smooth and um, a method equals LM. So the, um, the issue that I have to deal with before I can actually get this plot is that right now the term column consists of um, what I would call to be um, variable names. I would really like to have a column for intercept and a column for build depth MM for each of these three different species. So I want to do a pivot wider on this. Uh, let's see here. Let's get a plot showing the linear models in the three groups. All right, so how about penguins wide? And so I'm going to take the penguins. Uh, let's see, which one was it? Penguins M? Yes, penguins M. And I'm going to pipe it into a pivot wider. And so I need to specify names from and a values from. So names from is going to be the basically the problem column. So here it's term. And my values then are going to come from everything to the right of term. So that's from estimate to model glance. from estimate to model underscore glance. Let's take a look at that. It's always good to get a little practice with our pivoting. All right, so we have three rows, a daily, gen, gen two, and chin strap. A lot of different columns, but I'm gonna be interested in estimate underscore intercept and estimate underscore bill depth mm. So um, what I'm going to do now is to use a geom ab line, geom ab line, with these intercepts and these slopes. OK. Now, there's lots of different ways I could do this ggplot. The fundamental challenge I have is that this um, penguins wide data set here has the data in it, but it's, it's all nested up. So I would have to unnest this one way or another in order to actually plot the values in the data set. I'm going to get around that a little bit 
by um, doing a geom point using my original data set. So for x, I want bill depth mm. For y, I want bill length mm. I'm going to do a color by species. And let's just make sure that works. OK, certainly not pretty. I'll zoom in on it in a little bit after I get a little bit more done with this. Um, right off the bat, I want to make it colorblind friendly. So uh, scale color brewer palette equals quote dark two. I just feel better about that. All right, so let's get some uh, let's get some regression lines on here. So I'm going to use geome abline, like I said a minute ago, and uh, this time the data is going to be that penguins wide. So for the geome AB line, I need to specify slopes and intercepts. I'm going to do these as aesthetics because I want to have a different slope and a different intercept for each row in the data set. So my slope here in penguins wide is coming from estimate bill depth mm. How much you want to bet I misspell something in here somewhere. And the intercept is coming from estimate underscore parenthesis intercept. Estimate intercept. And it has to be capitalized, I believe. Unexpected parenthesis estimate underscore intercept. Do I need a tick here? Nope. Estimate underscore intercept. Estimate underscore intercept parenthesis. Close up the AES. Close up the data. There's the problem. I was missing a parenthesis. OK, the colors aren't matching up. Let's fix that. Get that inside the parenthesis here color equals uh, species as well. That should be about what I'm looking for. We'll zoom in on that. In a perfect world, I would have used a geom segment so that these line segments, so that these lines didn't extend beyond the range of the data in their respective groups. Um, this has already been a long enough video. I think I'm going to pick my battles on this one. 